Imagine a world where strange, small-statured creatures roam a lush, prehistoric forest under a blazing sun. They climb trees with ease, their nimble fingers grasping branches. Yet they walk upright like us, their eyes scanning the horizon for danger. These are not apes, nor are they quite human. They are Homo naledi, a mysterious branch of our family tree that challenges everything we thought we knew about human evolution. In the heart of South Africa's ancient caves, their bones whisper stories of survival, adaptation, and perhaps even ritual. Buckle up because today we're diving deep into the prehistoric enigma of Homo naledi, a tale that will leave you questioning what it means to be human. Welcome to the wild, untamed world of our ancestors. Picture this. 300,000 years ago, the Highveld region of South Africa is a vibrant mosaic of towering trees, rocky outcrops, and sprawling grasslands. The air hums with the buzz of insects, the distant roar of a lion, and the rustle of leaves as small, agile hominins dart through the forest. These are the Homo naledi, a species unlike any other, living in a world teeming with life and danger. Their discovery in 2013 inside the Rising Star cave system turned the scientific world upside down, revealing a species that defies the neat timeline of human evolution. The Rising Star Caves, a labyrinth of narrow passages and hidden chambers, were not just a shelter, but a time capsule. Deep within, explorers found over 1,500 fossil fragments from at least 15 individuals, men, women, children, and infants. This wasn't just a graveyard. It was a treasure trove of clues about a lost world. The bones, some still articulated like hands frozen in time, were remarkably preserved offering a window into a species that walked the earth alongside our own ancestors. But what makes Homo naledi so special? Let's unravel their story step by step in the context of their prehistoric home. Homo naledi's appearance would have startled any modern human who stumbled upon them in the ancient forests. Standing just four feet, nine inches tall and weighing about 88 pounds, they were pint-sized compared to other middle Pleistocene hominins. Their bodies were a patchwork of old and new, a living paradox of evolution. Their small skulls, with brain sizes ranging from 460 to 610 cubic centimeters, were closer to Australopithecines from millions of years ago than to the larger-brained Homo erectus or Neanderthals. Yet their frontal lobes, key to complex behaviors like tool use and social interaction, showed surprising similarities to modern humans. Their hands tell a dual story. Long, curved fingers suggest they were adept climbers, scaling trees to escape predators or gather fruit. But their thumbs and wrists were built for precision, much like ours, hinting at the ability to craft tools or manipulate objects with finesse. Their legs and feet, meanwhile, were unmistakably bipedal, designed for long treks across the rugged landscape. Imagine them striding through the forest, their narrow shoulders swaying, occasionally pausing to climb a rocky outcrop or dig for roots. This blend of traits, part ape, part human, sets them apart from every other known hominin. This mosaic of features fascinates me because it shows evolution isn't a straight line from primitive to advanced. Homo naledi's small brain didn't hold them back. They thrived in their niche for thousands of years. It's a reminder that nature values efficiency over complexity. Their survival in a harsh prehistoric world without the large brains we associate with intelligence challenges our assumptions about what makes a species successful. Homo naledi's world was no paradise. The Highveld was a dynamic ecosystem with dense forests giving way to grassy plains dotted with caves. Unlike Homo sapiens, who hunted across open savannas, Naledi likely stuck to the safety of wooded areas where their climbing skills offered protection from predators like leopards or hyenas. Their teeth, worn and chipped from gritty foods like unwashed roots, tubers, or nuts, paint a picture of a diet scraped from the earth. Picture a group of Naledi crouched around a patch of soil, using their strong thumbs to pry out starchy tubers, their faces dusted with dirt. Did they use tools? 
Their hands suggest they could have crafted simple stone implements, but no tools have been found in the caves. This absence is intriguing. Perhaps they relied on wooden digging sticks or bone tools that didn't survive the fossil record. Or maybe, in a world where other hominins were napping flint and hunting big game, Naledi found success without complex technology. Their small size and agile bodies meant they needed fewer calories, allowing them to thrive on a diet of forage plants and small animals. The lack of tools is a puzzle. Other hominins like Homo habilis were defined by their tool making, yet Naledi's survival without heavy reliance on technology suggests a different strategy. In a prehistoric world where resources were scarce, their low energy lifestyle may have been an evolutionary advantage. It's a humbling lesson. Sometimes simplicity is the key to survival. The most captivating aspect of Homo naledi is where their bones were found, deep within the pitch black chambers of the rising star caves. Reaching the Dinaledi chamber requires a grueling 40 minute crawl through passages as narrow as 18 centimeters, even for modern cavers with lights and maps. How did these small brain hominins navigate such treacherous terrain? And why were their bodies from infants to elders deposited there? One bold hypothesis suggests deliberate burial, a behavior we associate with modern humans. The absence of predator marks, other animal remains, or signs of flooding supports this idea. Imagine a group of Naledi clutching a fallen companion venturing into the cave's darkness, perhaps guided by the flickering light of a fire. This act, if true, implies a level of social complexity and emotional depth we didn't expect from a species with such small brains. They might have mourned their dead, much like chimpanzees carry their deceased young, driven by grief or a need to protect their community from scavengers. But not everyone agrees. Some researchers argue the bones could have been naturally deposited, perhaps mummified by the cave's dry conditions or carried by water through an undiscovered entrance. Evidence of beetle and snail damage on some bones suggests decomposition began before burial, complicating the story. The debate is far from settled, but the idea of Naledi performing burials in their prehistoric world is tantalizing. It hints at a shared humanity, even across hundreds of thousands of years. The burial hypothesis blows my mind because it suggests Homo Naledi had a sense of community and loss something we consider uniquely human. Even if they didn't bury their dead, their presence in the cave shows they interacted with their environment in ways we're only beginning to understand. It makes me wonder what rituals or beliefs shaped their prehistoric lives. Were they honoring their dead or simply hiding them from a dangerous world? Around 300,000 years ago, as Homo naledi foraged in South Africa's forests, Early Homo sapiens were emerging on the savannas. These two species, so different in body and lifestyle, likely crossed paths. Sapiens, with their larger brains and varied diets, hunted game and processed food with sophisticated tools. Naledi, smaller and less reliant on meat, stuck to their forested niches, munching on tough plants. This division of habitats, sapiens in open grasslands, Naledi in wooded areas, likely allowed them to coexist without direct competition. But as grasslands expanded, Naledi's forest homes may have shrunk, squeezing their populations. Their low dental variation hints at limited genetic diversity, making them vulnerable to environmental changes. While some speculate Homo sapiens drove them to extinction, the evidence suggests Naledi's decline was more about habitat loss than conflict. Picture a Naledi clan watching from the forest's edge as Sapiens fires glowed on the plains, a fleeting moment of coexistence in a changing world. This coexistence fascinates me because it shows how diverse human evolution was. We weren't the only humans on the block, and our ancestors likely encountered creatures like Naledi who were both familiar and alien. It's a reminder that our species' dominance wasn't inevitable. Naledi's story is a testament to the fragility of survival. To make Homo Naledi's world more vivid, let's imagine a day in their lives through a fictional, yet plausible story grounded in their environment and traits. Picture a young Naledi 
whom we'll call Quay, living in a forested valley 300,000 years ago. Quay wakes at dawn, her stomach rumbling. She joins her clan, a tight-knit group of 20, as they climb a rocky outcrop to gather nuts from a towering tree. Her curved fingers grip the bark effortlessly, but a rustle below, a leopard, sends her heart racing. Using her bipedal agility, she scrambles to safety, her clan hooting warnings. Later, they dig for tubers with sharpened sticks, their worn teeth crunching through gritty roots. As night falls, they huddle in a cave, perhaps mourning a lost elder by placing their body in a hidden chamber, a solemn act to protect their home from scavengers. This story mirrors real-world examples of small-scale societies. For instance, the Hadza people of Tanzania, modern hunter-gatherers, live in environments similar to Naledi's, foraging for roots and small game while navigating predator-filled landscapes. Their simple tools and tight social bonds echo what Naledi's life might have been like. Similarly, archaeological finds of Neanderthal burials in Europe, like those at Shanidar Cave, show early hominins engaging in ritualistic behavior, lending credence to the idea that Naledi might have done the same. These parallels make Naledi relatable. Their small stature and resourcefulness remind me of how modern humans adapt to harsh environments, relying on community and ingenuity. Quay's story, though imagined, brings their prehistoric struggles into focus, showing us that survival was a daily battle won through cooperation and resilience. Homo Naledi's place in the human family tree is a puzzle. Their mix of primitive and derived traits, small brains, modern hands, bipedal legs, suggests they branched off early, perhaps near Homo habilis or Australopithecus sediba, around two million years ago. Some see them as a South African variant of habilis, while others propose they could be related to Homo erectus or even a hybrid of Homo and late Australopithecines. Their small brains persisted into a time when larger-brained hominins dominated, showing that evolution doesn't always favor, bigger is better. This complexity is what makes Naledi so compelling. They remind us that human evolution was a messy branching process, not a ladder to Homo sapiens. Their survival alongside our ancestors shows that different strategies, big brains or small, tool heavy or tool light, could coexist. It's humbling to think that our species wasn't the only ones shaping the prehistoric world. Homo Naledi's story teaches us that humanity is not defined by a single path. Their small brains, simple lifestyle, and possible burial practices show that intelligence, community, and even ritual can take many forms. In a world obsessed with progress and complexity, Naledi reminds us that simplicity and adaptation are just as powerful. Their coexistence with our ancestors challenges us to embrace diversity, not just in species, but in ideas and ways of life. As we navigate our modern world, let's remember Naledi's lesson. Survival isn't about being the strongest or smartest, but about finding balance with the world around us. So what do you think? Could Homo Naledi have buried their dead or were their bones just a quirk of nature? Drop your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more journeys into our prehistoric past. Until next time, keep exploring the wild, wonderful world of human evolution.